and grape shot for 27 is our friend pew 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 and we win Hello YouTube, welcome to Fine Day. Today we are going to have a look at Bergy God of Storytelling in Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by playing Bergy and then using a ability to gain a ton of mana to just draw basically the whole deck, uh, uh, hopefully, and then just win uh, with just basically Mono Red Storm. Yeah, this is exactly what this deck is, Mono Red Storm. So, uh, Bergy, whenever we cast any spell, doesn't matter, uh, we get one additional red. And that is really the tipping point, and that's all we need, right? Ornithopter generates us one mana. Uh, Thomas' uh, uh, Crypt is a ritual now. Um, things like Royal are fr the free draw cards, right? We just draw something for free, great. Skirk Prospector, sacrificing a goblin. Well, it can't sack itself, so it's effectively a zero mana card. Strike it rich, all those cards just generate you a ton, a ton of mana. Once we have that mana, we start drawing cards. Uh, we have things like Electrostatic Blast, effectively costing one, and then we play our next instant or sorcery. Just look at the top three, eggs are one of them, we can play it, right? Cleansing Wildfire, it effectively costs one to draw a card. Uh, it, like, this is really a critical mass deck, and we're barely mm, just not there usually, right? Like this deck uh, is um, it's a bit feast of famine, but it is certainly super, super, super fun when it goes off. The actual win conditions in this deck, like you have a ton, a ton of different lines in this deck, but it usually involves uh, finding um, something that either generates your mana, so something like a, a runaway steamkin, or a Stormkin artist, and now you're just going plus and plus and plus in mana, and you're you can't be stopped basically. Or just straight up find the Underworld Breach. This card is an absolute house. Um, what happens is you can use your uh, discard spells, uh, something like a uh, Pirate's Pillage from the graveyard. Um, and then you discard the card as an additional cost and then you can immediately uh, also use it for the escape cost because you use the additional cost from the card itself first in this case so you discard the card you can discard a land and then you can um use uh, the card you just discarded for the escape cost and then you just keep playing uh, Pirate's Pillage from the graveyard over and over and over just generate a ton of treasures just go off that way basically um, now we can find Grapeshot to actually kill the opponent we have uh, something like a Fist of Flame making something absolutely massive um, we also have a bunch of infinite combos involving Grinning Ignis uh, the easy because this it costs basically uh, two and double red, and Bergy reduces this by one red, and Ignis reduces itself as well. Like this with Bergy alone is uh, even in mana. You can just play Ignis, bounce Ignis, play Ignis, bounce Ignis, play Ignis, bounce Ignis over and over and over and over and over again. So if we just have Ignis plus Grape Shot plus Bergy, that's Infinite Storm. Right, we don't need to go plus a mana, we just need to go even, infinite storm, kill the opponent. If we have a hazards monument on the field, now we're just netting mana every time. And if we just have one card in hand, uh, we can basically just uh, discard, draw, discard, draw, discard, draw, discard, draw, and we just stop at something like an underworld breach, at a, um, at a grape shot, what have you, right? But that is just absolute insanity. Um, the deck has quite a bit of filler currently because it was like I was about to release the Bergy Mono Red Storm deck and then we got the change to 100 cards so I needed to wait until we got more cards to replace the old cards list. Uh, with, this is still not at the exact same power level it used to be but it is still very very close. Um, yeah, so about the filler cards, we have a bunch of one mana cycling cards in the deck. These do not trigger a uh, Bergy, that is the main problem, because this doesn't cast the card. Um, it just is an act uh, activated ability from your hand, so it's actually just one mana, discard and draw. And we have a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of those effects, like 10, 20, something like that. Um, well, not in exactly cycling, but similar cards. And that's why we run only 32 lands, because we can just, like, on turn 1 and 2, we just draw, 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 and get our land drops that way. Um, so overall, uh, I this deck is just 
balls to the walls all in uh, on the burgy mono red storm we're going to test some cards like invoke calamity as, uh, as well from the latest set and there's also one last card i want to talk about in the set and that is a pretty difficult one to use correctly and that is fervent mastery uh, so first and foremost if you even just think in the slightest that you need the additional mana, just pay the four, right? Um, so and the opponent gets to sculpt their hand a little bit, but that usually shouldn't matter because if you're popping off anyways, they showed you that they don't have interaction, right? Um, and then maybe if they have mana up, then you're a bit in trouble, but usually just like the mana is really, really valuable, the additional one. So now we search three cards and discard three cards at random. And there are some piles that deterministically do whatever we want it to do. And we don't care what we discard. Uh, so the most popular one here would be the just the, a two card combo, basically. Maximize Velocity and Ox of Agonas. So the basic idea here is we have a bunch of cards in the graveyard and we just want a cheap draw three effects. Uh, what do we do? Um, let's say Ox of Agonas lands in the graveyard. Perfect. All right? Perfect. Um, so it is in the graveyard now. We achieved our goal. If it lands in the hand and the Maximize Velocity lands in the hand, then what you simply do, you cast Maximize Velocity for effectively zero. And then you cast it from the graveyard again for zero, but you jumpstart it and then you discard the ox and now you have the ox in the graveyard. So you just can't guarantee getting an ox of Agonas into the graveyard with Fervent Mastery, which is pretty, pretty nice. There are a lot of intricate lines like this in this deck, like a lot, a lot of them. You will have to see like in the gameplay a bunch, but like I, I won't be able to go through literally all of them because they're like so many like little pieces and uh, bits and just flying around <laughs> basically um although one more thing one more thing um so this is pretty important if you have something like a pirate's pillage or an unexpected windfall and all those lines you you might think they're niche but you draw so many cards that they're actually not that niche um and let's say i cast unexpected windfall and i have an increasing vengeance what now happens is I cast this, I cast Vengeance on it, and um, now if I have an Underworld Breach, I can cast the Vengeance for two mana with the Escape, get the additional copies, um, because it got cast from the graveyard, um, now we have a... Um, multiple windfalls on the stack we let all of them resolve but one now we have additional treasures we use our instant speed cards to put more cards into the graveyard and then we use those to feed into the vengeance to go from the graveyard again to the windfall and we're just basically popping off um yeah overall this is a uh sometimes consistent um mono red storm deck or ruby storm as some people know it and uh Man, I, I love this deck. Uh, let's let's see it in action and um, hope you enjoyed. If you do, consider subscribing to the channel because, man, we just hit 1,000 subscribers. So thank you very much for uh, everyone involved. Um, yeah, it has been a journey um, since I decided to do like basically daily uploads for like the past three, four months. Um, yeah, the, the channel uh, just got uh, a whole lot of new subscribers. So thank you for that. Um, I've been doing the uh, like playing and doing content for this format now for two years. And uh, yeah, we finally hit the 1000 subscribers. Yeah, it, it is amazing. Anyways, uh, let's enjoy this gameplay together, shall we? We are ready to play against Gishath, Sun's Avatar. And um, increasing vengeance plus unexpected windfall. Uh, Against Gishath, I th I'm on the play, so I think I can go pretty slow. I can pl uh, play Burgi on three and then just relax a bit, basically, because I don't. Th I think they are just ramping to Gishath. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep this because uh, Reverberation plus Windfall is just basically like you cast those two, especially with the Vengeance in hand, you just instantly win. And they pulled Mulligan twice already. Um, yeah, let's see if they found something that they wanted to fight. Uh, so yeah, uh, 1000 subscribers. Is there going to be a 1000 subscriber special? No, I don't have time for that. But what I did do is I just took the liberty and I 
I just played this deck. Like, I usually, when a new set releases, I do new commanders. But, um, yeah, this is just me doing my thing here. Um, and I love Storm. Like, <laughs> if you watch this channel um, a couple times, you know that I really like my Storm decks. Okay. Burgeon 3. Uh, and I'm going to save this Conjurant for a big, big um, turn that's hopefully coming up. I mean, I am hoping that they don't have interaction, but 90% of Gishoth decks I've seen um, usually just ramp to Gishoth, so I'm just using my experience from the format here. Uh, I'm starting on the synthesizer that is basically completely free. I hope to get a land drop off of this, but if I don't, that is fine. Oh, that's a ritual. Um, I mean, I am going to cast this this turn just because it is... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm... If I have... Uh, one, two, yeah, I'm a bit off. I think I can... I can kind of go for it. I can windfall incre increasing vengeance. I mean, yeah, sure. If I wait one turn, I get, have the guaranteed win. So let's try to uh, have the not guaranteed win, shall we? So, boom. We discard a card. I don't think I will need these... Revelation, that is actually the most expensive card here. We add one red. We increasing vengeance. This. Yep. And let's see where we go from here. Because I'm not the person that wants to wait right now. We are popping off, so yeah. Okay, let's cycle this away. Mm -hmm. Can't block this turn. I, I should have done this on the grazer. Not that it matters too much. Oh my god, that is a Steamkin. Okay. Um, we are going to play the land here. The question is, how do we do this? Uh, Scrabbling Claws. Um, I mean, it's literally free. I want some sheep cycling here. Mm-hmm. I want to get the Steamkin activation as soon as possible. Oh, that's a seize the spoils. Ah, we're whiffing. But I think that is fine. Uh, so I'm exiling this. Do I get a mox? No mox. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I mean, I knew that I was going to have lethal next turn anyways. I just wanted to see if I get lethal this turn. Right? That was basically one mana off. Because with the seize the spoils... Just run away, Steamkin, getting counters there. Um, if I got the Steamkin a bit earlier, that would have obviously been really lethal. Um, but yeah, we for sure win next turn, um, if the opponent doesn't interact. But, I mean, given that was our win condition anyways, last turn as well. Like, so, I'm, I'm kind of kind of fine with my position here. Okay. Um, the opponent is currently roping us. But yeah, I believe they didn't like what they see. Um, oh well. Yeah, they, this is a very, like, solitaire heavy deck. You usually do, like, you play, like, 30, 40 cards um, in one turn, and you're just sitting there doing your thing, and the opponent... I mean, I guess the opponent doesn't have fun. I, I, whenever I see a Storm deck pop off, I'm just like, oh, they're doing the thing, I want to do the thing as well, but, ah, oh, this is just awesome watching, but, oh well. Um, I missed an attack with the Burgi last turn, uh, so guess I, like, missed three damage. It shouldn't matter too much, though, shouldn't it? Okay, opponent, don't surrender on me. This is going to be the first uh, um, video, uh, video, the first game in the video. Uh, don't do this to me. And, uh, oh, okay. They are not having it, apparently. Okay, um, Let's show what this deck is capable of. Dragon Rage Chandler is pretty amazing because we just get to surveil a ton and we're just aggressive, like really aggressively surveilling in this deck. So repeated reverberation. Mm -hmm. Resolve. Yep. Steamkin. Discard you. Get multiple seas to spoils. Yep. Sees the spoils happening. Yes. 
and increasing vengeance. Yeah, sure. Auto pay. Draw more. Yep, been you. Seize. Seize. And seize. Okay. We have one more land drop here. Uh, so now we just ether flux the opponent. Yep, that is happening. And I mean, if the opponent didn't have anything to remove my board, it didn't matter if they like skipped a turn or not because, like, they needed to do something about the steamkin basically. Like, I had so much mana to work with. Um, yep, steamkin, and uh, I'm I'm just clicking cards. Yeah, clicking cards to get there. Whatever has the shortest animation basically um so with march 99.99999 percent of the time you're just like exiling two um because that costs effectively zero mana and you pitch a card from hand so you lo look at it like a um zero mana uh or like similar to faith is doing right oh, i just paid mana for it i didn't pitch a card oh well um so faith is doing happening Yep, been you. And we shoot the opponent for 50 damage. GG. We are ready to play against Sorin, uh, Vengeful Blood Lord. Vengeful Blood Lord, it is indeed. And um, yeah, sure, hand seems playable. I think I'm going to keep it. Um, just draws a ton of cards. I like it because I get to filter with the Dragon Rage Chandlers early. Um, Zalfrin Void is... Uh, oh yeah, there is another red. Perfect, perfect. So yeah, I'm going to lead on the Dragon Rage Chandler. I wanna... This is a game where I wanna set up, play Berg and win in the same turn for sure. Because Black White is really removal heavy. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I'm looking for. I'm going to look to set up with the Dragon Rage Chandler. Uh, the, in case you're wondering, the basking root wall is effectively zero mana because we have so many ways of just actually um, like discarding cards. We can just get rid of it whenever we want to. Like for example, we'll just maximize velocity root wall and that works. Um, I'm going to play the red here because I do need to uh, just keep cycling, keep cycling. That is our idea here. Next turn, I'm just going with Revelation, and I assume on turn four, I'm going with Windfall. Although, Windfall plus Revelation, um, it is the same combo as last time, right? But it is extremely, extremely potent. Um, it does need a lot of mana, though, if I want to actually play the Burgi in the same turn, however. Uh, I think it is time to sneak in the Zalfrin Void, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Nope, don't need you. Uh, we revelation first discarding a land obviously and you see like we're just drawing a bunch of lands here um, Like anyways because we're just so aggressively aggressively digging through our deck Okay, we have a mindstone as a setup piece for um, In a couple turns uh, I'm currently thinking they're not putting too much pressure on me right now and I really want to just school I want to kill them in the last possible turn that we can to like to just get the most setup time um, out of this. Okay, um, Vona is actually really scary. I might need to do something now against it because they can just kill my Burgi at instant speed with that anytime they want. Although I could pressure the life total, but um, let's see. Mm. Burgi, one mana. Crypt, two mana. Velocity, Rootvola, three mana. I'm one mana short of a wind falling here. That is extremely, 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 extremely unfortunate. Let's count again. One mana, uh, two mana, three mana. Yeah, I'm just off. So the question is do I just windfall? I'd rather not. I think th I j this is a game I definitely need to like set up with um, repeated reverberation windfall. 
the question is do I want to ramp now or do I like do the uh, electric uh, revelation because I effectively like I can I'm not going to do something big next turn as well I'm going to wait two turns right so by doing the revelation in their turn I'm kind of playing around um, I am playing around uh, discard effects a bit but also I get to be a bit more mana efficient right yeah this Vona is a real 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 problem like I'm not even kidding that is a real problem and they're just gaining more life than I can deal them damage so they also don't even feel pressured into um, like I can't pressure the life total so the Vona activation um, is not really possible right uh, I can kill the Cardinal Vampire, but what actually does that do me? Probably, uh, it's probably worse than just, you know, electric revelationing here. <clears throat> That's a land, ew. Get rid of them. I mean, we want to hit our land drops, right? But not like this. <clears throat> yeah, this is... A real like big setup turn that has to come out here because I have to fight through this Vona, so I need to think about it. Oh 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 oh! Oh opponent, are you doing a mistake here? Oh, you're not. You're not. You're a patient. Ah, uh, you are patient. Okay. I mean, we always make all land drops. And the, the only land that I'm waiting for usually is Sulfur and Void. Um, so drop Burgi. Now we actually have enough mana to go Burgi, Maximize Velocity, Discarding, Roof Waller, Thomas Crypt into an expected windfall. Um, oh, I, there was a reason to not play this land, and it's if I get double lands of Light off the Stage. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait! Activate only during your turn. I am so stupid. I am a very, very stupid, silly goose. Now everything is solved, right? Yo, land, get away from me. That is something. Yeah, I can't play those next turn, right? Okay, we 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 have decided. Uh, next turn is going to be the turn we kill them. Cathodic Reunion, um, it goes minus in mana actually, so not doing that. I could have Fervent Mastery for something. Um, no, I, I think this is this is exactly how we leave our turn. Ah man, I, I just forgot that Vona is actually bad. Um, <laughs> imagine reading the last line of text. Yeah, okay, so activate only during your turn. So it is instant speed, right? but only during their own turn. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's see, Twilight Prophet, that doesn't do anything. If they have a kill spell now at instant speed, that would be um, unfortunate. I honestly, like I'm dying next turn anyways. No, I'm not dying next turn, uh, so. Do you kill the Dragon Rage Shallow now? Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, as to be expected, but um, is what it is. Okay, okay, um, we have something at our hands here, guys. Uh, we are doing something big, 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 big. Uh, do you maximize velocity jump starting the yes. Honestly, I should have used this. I shouldn't have jump started. That was card disadvantage. Oh, no, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. Because this is like actual insanity. So I windfall here. This card repeat, repeated. That is not something I'm going to need, I think. So now. Oh, yeah, that's a land drop. I can invoke calamity and then windfall plus. Uh, honestly, just breach, breach, and then 
How do we go up in mana? How do we go up in mana? Uh, oh, I know how. Yes, exile your graveyard. Um, and I think for now... Do I have enough in the graveyard? No. Okay. So now we're doing the cool tech. Fervent Mastery of four. That's why we, we can only pay the study cost from hand. That's why we needed to um, and not discard this. Like the study cost is the alternative uh, cheaper cost that lets the opponent do something, right? So now the opponent gets to discard. They should just bin everything and... Uh -huh. Okay, and now I get to tutor for three cards basically. And I just want mana. And I want Runaway Steamkin. I want a Mox Amber. And I'm currently thinking I want a where is it? Uh Hazard's Monument. So with this pile, I should be able to generate a win here out of nothing. Okay, I need to speed this ex up extremely fast. One, two, uh, three. Mox Amber, generate a bunch of mana. Yes. Okay. Um, I am going to uh, then proceed to... Uh, man, my clock is ticking. Fervent Mastery... No, well, no. Don't need this. Don't need this ice. No, maybe. Maybe, maybe. This, this. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, we have to... Uh, crash through, I believe. Yes, crash through. Uh, one, two, and three. And we get a counter for the steamkin. We draw a card. Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. Mm we get our engine going here. Discard two cards. I have to speed through this. I don't have time to explain. Uh, you, you, and you. Okay. And now I should start seeing results here. Yes, okay. Can't block. Oh my god, the clock is ticking. Uh, we have to speed this up extremely quickly. Okay, crack steamkin. We go with the uh, March of Reckless Joy, pitching a uh, Skirt Prospector. Uh, we get to exile the top two cards. We get to play them. Oh, that's a Striker Bridge. Sure. Uh, Grinning Ignis is actually just infinite mana with a steamkin here. So return that to hand, play Ignis again. Yes. Um, return that to hand, crack steamkin, return Ignis. So now we have infinite mana, right? So we're going to do this a couple of times um, until I'm happy with what I have of floating mana. And I need to get a bit more mana here a, a bit more cards actually in hand so card quantity is important here just because oh i did forget to crack stinkens didn't i uh, did i i think i did so do this so now play again uh, for some reason i'm playing so fast that the opponent's time is ticking Guys, that is actually um, peak magic right there, as Richard Garfield intended. So now I'm going to Fervent Mastery, pitching this, this, uh, this, yeah, pitching these. And I get to search for three cards, and only one of these cards actually matter. Um, and I'm going with the fastest version here for Aether Flux. I can also go for this and Fist of Flame. So I have three ways of actually winning the game here, but I can just... Um, because I could cast them from a graveyard as well, right? Uh, yeah, because I could uh, play the Striker Dredge here, right? Oh wait, no, that I did, did I just take an unnecessarily risky line of play? I think so. Anyways, Grape Shot U425. I am. I think that was like a really. Like, there was maybe a bit of a cleaner line, but. Sometimes you just gotta, um, by the way, you can just spam the client and does the same target. Uh, but sometimes you just gotta think fast, right? Like this is something you guys will probably encounter if you don't have the, like, expertise in this deck. 
You are just going to run out of time for sure. Um. Yeah, anyways. We waited, it paid off, and Grape Shot 4 27 is our friend. Pew pew pew, and we win. Oh my god, the animation is so slow. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Um, was there a way to do this? Well, yeah, probably I could have. I was still able to cast in Vogue Calamity. I should have done this a long time ago. I could have also went into the Infinite Mana way earlier, and that would have saved me a lot of trouble. Um, yeah, overall, uh, definitely not optimally played, but we got there anyways. Uh, I just. <laughs> My back was against the wall, and the timer was ticking. GG. We are done with the games. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. And Bergy, god of storytelling. Man, it's one hell of a drug. Let me tell you that. I, as you've seen from the games, this is one of the decks that I just play in private, that I enjoy. It is not top tier or anything, but I just love it. And you really, really, really need to practice this deck. Um, you're going to lose against the timer a lot of the time before you actually just get to pull off your commas because you need to like know all the lines, ins and outs, your mana breakdowns and whatnot. right? And even I did like some mistakes that I think could have costed me the game in one up um, in the last one, but man, it is really a deck. I I absolutely adore it. The like every single set, like you just like get a red cantrip and you're like yes, critical mass, and um, just it is lovely. I love it. Anyways, if you want to play this deck on a budget, what can you cut? What do you need? And since this is such a critical mass deck and we're arguably not even there yet on the critical mass, you are going to have an extremely rough time cutting cards. Yeah. So the experimental slots currently... Um, well, okay, first and foremost, um, lands, right? You, the only lands uh, you want for this deck are Forgotten Cave and Zalfrin Void because they, those filter you and then maybe Cryptic Caves as well. But um, other than that, you just run for mountains, right? Um, same goes for the Shadow Skull, like that is in the same category. But the I have some experimental slots currently in because, well, on one side I don't have anything better right now, but on the other side, um, like they are definitely on the chopping block if we get more stuff. But I, for now, I'm interested in how they perform, and that is Invoke Calamity and Change of Fortune. Those are pretty, uh, yeah, they're experimental for sure. So Invoke Calamity, you saw in the games. I could have utilized this in the last combo. Um, I think it would have also just like been the correct play at one point, uh, maybe. I, I need to like, I need to rewatch the game basically and just like, hmm, okay, like look at the lines because there was a lot, a lot of things going on and um, yeah, I need to do it pretty, pretty quickly, right? So yeah, Invoke Calamity, I'm currently testing this. Um, this helps you basically with setup turns. Um, that is why it's in here, because you can, um, like if you're in a matchup like the last one where you needed to go slow and drop Bergy and win in the same turn, you are going to like turn four unexpected windfall, turn five Invoke Cal Calamity, bring back the windfall and cast something else, right? And then on turn six, you're going to drop Bergy with a ton of treasures in play and um, yeah you do your thing then basically that that is the idea here behind info calamity change of fortune is a card that helps you in situations where you have a ton of man on the field but you're running dry on cards right let's say you draw 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 and discard draw discard draw discard like you draw your thrills you draw your tormenting voices but you just can't get a grip and you can't go like plus in cards you're just staying even in cards you're still staying even and then you suddenly go down in cards and, and you're just running dry right but you have all the mana in the world because you maybe have a steam can you maybe have a storm cone artist right in that case change of fortune got your back because potentially this card can draw you like 13 15 cards in a turn if you like have the right setup for it um this also uh, technically like like if you have a hazards monument out on the field earlier your uh, ritual creatures still get you discard like draw cards here 
right? And then these also feed into the change of fortune, just drawing you more and more cards. So that is one of the solutions. The reason why I say experimental for both of these is that they're so expensive, right? I think that is a pretty obvious reason. And also like repeated reiteration. It is extreme, like, it, it's instantly game-winning when you cast it, but you really can't cast it often. That That is also a thing, right? So maybe you don't need these. The rest, unfortunately, it is a bit, uh, it's a bit trickier, right? Mox Ember, a must. Fayette Lizarding, a must. Stone Color, must. Uh, March of Reckless Joy, absolute must uh, from the latest set, because, like, either zero mana or just rituals. Like, zero mana draw and rituals, you need all of them. Straight up all of them. Um... So Electrostatic Blast is basically just a bit of card filtering, but we don't have anything better, but it's still like decent. It's just one mana, look at the top three, take one basically. Um, the, the really cool thing is this sets up really nicely in a way that you play this on turn two, and this tracks through turns, so you can play this wait a couple of turns well like just one or two turns and then you play your instant or sorcery and then you get the eggs on the top three cards trigger so that is pretty cool um grape shot you need this to kill runaway you need this for mana underworld breach most busted card in the deck obviously um increasing vengeance uh you really really want it because this allows you to do like the shenanigans with unexpected windfall as you saw and you can do some really nasty nasty things uh finale of promise kind of in the same vein you, finale of promise actually um works with increasing vengeance in a way that you cast two things you cast the like you cast the sorcery and then you put the vengeance onto the trigger and you get to basically play your sorcery twice um well although this is like this is also casting them from a graveyard so it's even more with the vengeance right so this is pretty disgusting um Valakut awakening is just a better land and helps you with the critical mass aspect again i can just repeat that word uh ethernox kills and ox of agonas and fervent mastery are a package basically that really helps the deck like you saw what fervent mastery can do here especially in conjunction with underworld breach so that is really something to fear and look out for um and if you have the mastery the ox is just so incredibly important and you saw the like lines with the uh, the tech card maximized velocity there so yeah um it is really a deck that is not cheap like if you have these cards sure cool uh fine right um but it is not a deck that where you can say okay i only have half the cards um Sorry, uh, you are out of luck. Um, although this is not the most expensive deck in the world, so I, I guess that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, overall, this was basically my version of a 1,000 1, subscriber special, just playing a deck that I love uh, and I just, you know, like to play. Um, it is as degenerate as it can get, but man, that's that's just me. That's what you guys hear for at the end of the day. Well, most of you, <laughs> at the very least. And yeah, Bergy, God of Storytelling. Man oh man, uh, what a card. Uh, just churn through your deck, play all the cards. Uh, hope you don't whiff, and um, have fun.